Welcome back to the Sandbox Tycoon series. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a saving system that actually loads on multiple plots. So in the last video, we made just a basic saving system where we saved information about the model, and then we can load it back in, but it will literally be in the exact same position. So what we need to do is we need to load it on, save it on one plot, and then be able to load it on any plot that the player may happen to join on. I would say it's probably impossible unless you have a single player game for a player to load on the same plot every single time. So this is really a crucial feature that you need to have, otherwise your game just simply won't work. So how do we do this? Well, pretty much what we're going to do is we are going to have to save the object in uh, object coordinates, and then we load it in world coordinates relative to the plot. So. What are world coordinates? Because those are going to be uh, exact. Those that's going to be crucial to understand. So, pretty much, world coordinates are going to be relative to the world. The world's zero 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 point is right about here. This is zero zero zero, as you can see, zero zero zero, and just you know the coordinates are taken from the center of all the objects so it's actually right about here it's actually right about like right around there is zero zero. Zero, 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 I mean so if we're taking a look at that that's really zero zero but we can imagine that this point right here is just zero 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 just for the sake of this but just make sure you do know that coordinates are taken from the center of models and parts not not the edges or anything like that. So imagine that we have our x-coordinate. I'm just going to be using x-coordinate for simplicity, but this goes for all of the coordinates. So here we go. Let me just say we have this part here, and we move it right about here. Actually, I'm just going to do this. So say we move it 35 studs to the right. So we can see that this is approximately 35 studs, and as you can see, it's actually exactly 35 studs from the center point of this model to the center point of this model, or part. And really what that's representing is a vector. The vector is basically from the center point of the world to the center point. It's going to be a vector, you can think of it almost being like an arrow, from here to here. And hopefully that makes sense. But basically, the 35 studs is really just the length or the magnitude of that vector. So whenever you move it along, you're basically just changing the length of that vector. And the same thing goes for other coordinates. And so you can see if you would go the other way, then it would just be, instead of it, would, instead of it being a positive vector, it's going to be a negative vector. And that's basically the, that's how, how it is. So what you can think of it doing is that basically we convert that to object coordinates which is going to be relative to a specific object and not the world and then we load it in relative to or in world coordinates but relative to the plot so then everything's going to load in properly so hopefully that made sense it's a little bit confusing I'll link, leave a link in the description to where you can learn a um, probably much better explained uh, object and world space kind of definition on the Roblox developer hub but that, that's kind of what you need to understand. It's basically from the, the center of the world, it's just how many, the length of the vector. So how do we actually convert this to object coordinates or and world coordinates? Well, we can see that on the, you know, to convert things to object space, it's basically C frame inverse times your C frame. So in this case, we would say the C frame of the plot inverse times whatever our C frame that we want to convert is. So pretty much that would be our model. So but we don't also have to do that. We can also do something a little bit simpler by just saying, well, we can actually use a function in Roblox called two object space. And that's gonna do the math for us. We don't have to do anything, we just have to do the function. So how do we do that? Well what we're going to do is we're going to just say plot.cframe. Actually, we have to say plot.plot.cframe. And then we give it 
the function to object space. And this might seem a bit weird, but we give it a new C frame. And we put a parenthesis right after the end of the C frame. We just say dot P. Okay? So we say C frame dot new, and then we give it the primary part dot C frame dot P. P just stands for dot position. So it's just going to return the position, not the rotation or anything like that. So now what we're going to do is now that we've called that function, then we just say dot x over here. And what's this error doing? Expect it to close. Oh, right, because there's the C frame dot new. And we can actually just copy this. So now it's going to convert that to object space. And then we're going to do the same thing on all the coordinates, although we don't have to do it for the orientation because that doesn't really need to be done. So as you can see, this is just going to return the x coordinate, this is going to return the y, and so on. So pretty much that is how that works. We just call a function to object space, this is going to convert the coordinate to object space, we're going to save that, and then when we load it back in, the inverse of just doing, we, to convert it from object space to world space relative to the plot, we have to say C frame times C frame. So you can see kind of a relationship here, we can see that C frame inverse times C frame is object space and C frames time C frame is object space or world space sorry <laughs> and so all we have to do is we is all we have to do is we can say dot, just plot dot plot dot, uh, dot C frame times C frame dot new and we don't even have to put parentheses around here this will handle it all it'll all work now one thing you may be think seeing is when we go to test uh, our, our, our save and see if it actually works is your data might be further away than you're used to depending on which plot you actually load on and that's the reason not because of the saving system not working it's because of the teleport block so you might have to adjust where your teleport block is because it might be your data might actually be saved over here relative to the plot but on one plot, it might seem like it was actually here just because the plot is rotated differently. So you're probably going to have to adjust where your teleport bricks are, or you might, and also you might have to rotate the plot if you have it in a specific way. But it, it should, once you've got all that, it should all load back in. So let's just actually hit play and yeah. Then I'll go over the code one more time. One thing you might actually have to do is reset your data. So I'm going to actually go ahead and do that. So. I don't know if it's a glitch or if it's just, yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna place a part. I'm gonna place it on this corner here. And I'm also gonna place it here and there. So now we have this and if we, hopefully you should save our data. If we load back in, as you can see, it loads the data back in. So it looks like it was just a data store uh, glitch. We didn't actually have any data or we did and or the data was corrupted or something. Um, but yeah. So now let's see what plot that we're actually on. So plot one. So if I remove that plot, this is a good way to test out if your code is actually working. Come on, Roblox. So we can remove plot one. We can put it outside of workspace. So then if we load onto another plot, so as you can see here, this is what I was talking about. It may seem like your data is loaded incorrectly, but it's really if we put our uh, if we put our teleport right here, it would be the exact same thing. So if we if we if we leave, and then let's join back in again. It's not gonna like load it in a different position. So as you can see, the same same exact position. So yeah, let me just go over this one more time. And then I'll go over some simple things that we can probably do to optimize our code, or if your code isn't working, before you comment down below saying it's not working, some things you can do. So pretty much what we, one thing is we, um, we're obviously converting this to object space. Just remember, the, it's the same exact thing as saying C frame inverse times a C frame. So just keep that in mind before you use this. If you want to have full control over everything that happens in the game, you might want to do C frame inverse times C frame, but it's really not necessary because you're not going to need to change that because that just works. But anyway, we're converting this to object space, and pretty much the only other thing that we're doing is we're loading it back in relative to the plot's position. So 
yeah, pretty much that's that's all we're doing. Everything else is the exact same. And one thing you may have to reset your data by just changing this data store key up here, or you could also just change the key variable, but it's up to you. So one thing you might want to do is if bef if your code isn't working, you may have to do certain things. So if you click on this game settings, I don't remember if you can actually enable it from there, but make sure that you have data source enabled as well as data source enabled for studio. So if you don't have data source enabled for studio, make sure you have those enabled because you're going to want to have access to them in studio as well as just turning data source on. So yeah, if you don't have data source enabled in studio, make sure you go turn those on. Make sure all your data source stuff is enabled. If it isn't, go turn it on and it should work. If not, you can comment down below or join the Discord server. Again, link in the description. So just keep that in mind. One thing I want to mention is that even though I'm using this sort of dictionary approach to saving the data, it's not the most efficient. You actually don't want to store like name, transform, and then the coordinates separately. What you want to do is you want to just, you want to get rid of the keys. You don't want to save them in a, a dictionary. You want to save them in a regular array. It may seem a little bit counterintuitive. So instead of saying like C frame or save dot transform dot X, you might say save four or whatever. But it's going to make it so that it's a lot easier to save. So you might not hit for one, because data source save all of these, and there's a limit to how much data you can save. So it's going to save each individual character plus the value. And if you're if you get a bunch of you know objects in one plot, it's going to be really easy to hit the data limit. It's still going to be pretty hard, but it, some people will hit it, and they're probably going to have data loss problems. So you don't want to have that happen. Now Roblox did just increase the data limit, but, well, it was a while ago, but they increased it, but still, you want to still stick to best practices. The only reason why I'm doing it like this is because for the sake of the tutorial being more of an intermediate tutorial, I want to keep it as simple as possible and as readable as possible. When you're going to make your professionally made game or whatever you're going to be planning on doing, don't save it like this, just save it in an array and, yeah, so to, get, to convert it back to an array, you can literally just do that. Get rid of the keys, get rid of all these things. Don't save it in a separate table. You can, but I mainly just did it because grouping. But again, you'd probably want to remove this embedded table here or a dictionary. I guess it actually is a dictionary. It's an embedded, it's a dictionary embedded in a dictionary. So yeah, you're gonna to want to get rid of that because of optimization. I may do a tutorial where I change that over so then you know, fixing bad practices or whatever in your code, but I'm not sure. So anyway, that's pretty much it, and hopefully this video helped. If you have any problems, again, join the Discord server. Link will be in the description, as always, and yeah.